him, he's a phony one, cuz I can't allow it. I'm overpowered like Bowser in your mouth. is writing checks with a negative balance. You can't cash that. I don't think it's covered by that Affleck. High side if you want. Welcome to Three Count Commentaries. This is your host, Mongo Slade. Now, I haven't done it in a while, but I didn't forget. We used to do a thing around here a couple weeks ago. We would take a series of women wrestlers posting their own L's, saying absolutely asinine, dumbass shit online, and then we talk about it. We laugh, everybody sits around, and we have jokes. It's a whole fun, good time, but... It was a little bit difficult. The girls have been on their best behaviors lately. At least for the most part. Nothing I really feel like I absolutely positively need to discuss. Until today. Until today. Where I found especially three stories. That I feel are absolutely ridiculous. And need to be discussed. One. Jay Cargill. Talking about fans who make people depressed. Two. Our good friend Maria, once again, bitching about WWE this time, how she doesn't want to wrestle anymore because of her WrestleMania 35 experience. Oh, boy. And last but certainly not least, Chelsea Green, who wanted to get a boob job as she was being called up to the main roster. Look, I got to say something about WWE's hiring practices. If you, The fact that they hired Chelsea Green... Who, you know, turns out to be a, a complete and total shit brain. She said a complete and total bird brain. You know, I don't understand that. And every time she seems to talk on this uh, podcast that she does, she sounds dumber and dumber every time. I just can't believe it. Um, but this is this one takes the goddamn cake. We'll get to that. <laughs> That's going to be the third one. But let's talk about Jay Cargill. Jay Cargill is very, very, very upset because wrestling fans have criticized her work, her in-ring skill, or lack thereof. Now, you know how these people was talking about how Jay Cargill has all the tools. She's got every tool imaginable. She's got all the tools. She's got the Batman belt of tools to be the best wrestler in the world. And all she does is stand in one place and say, I'm that bitch. So then she works a match on Dark, which she botches. It almost kills the girl with a slingshot. It was really bad. It looks like shit. Um, I would post it on the screen, but I don't want to get a copyright strike because Tony Khan is a little liberal with the copyright strikes. Take my word for it. Uh, so then when she gets criticized for it, she goes online and she says this. <sighs> Give me that same time your superstars had to pre- prepare. The coaches, the classes, I would be a fucking icon. Say I'm lying. I do this off muscle. Great coaches, great production, and great company. It was me to sink or swim. This shit is not easy. I'm proud of myself. Fuck you fans. Except my fans. I like you guys today. You fans really drive these wrestlers and entertainers into depression. None of you could do half of what the fuck we do. I know myself, and I would never let you guys tell me who I am, regardless to know what I do in the ring. Fuck that. Just sit back and watch the product. As for the critics saying I don't get it, quote, everybody can tell you how to do it. They never did it. Okay, I'm done. You all have a great afternoon. I literally work in mental health. I'm certified, and I have a degree. I know. Oof. So, Jay Cargill got really upset. She got really, really, really upset. So, to her defense, uh, she is very, very green. Okay, that's that's to her defense. That's one point in her, in her favor. However, I was hearing a lot about how she did go to a WWE tryout before the pandemic and, and all this stuff. And I'm not sure how that came about. Obviously, she didn't sign with WWE. But I kept hearing diverging stories. I heard the diversion story that she was turned down. And I also heard that she turned them down. I've heard similar things about Will Hobbs that usually WWE says, like, all right, you're not really all that good. But then later on, they may call them back for something like that. And they'd be like, no, I'm already under contract to AEW, bro. So maybe that's what happened. But ultimately, 
her having an absolute Simone Biles style meltdown because she got criticized on the Twitter machine by people watching AEW goddamn dark, which means they're already fans of yours because absolutely nobody else is watching that shit show. Um, it's ridiculous. She even, she goes, if we go back through the tweets of what she actually said, she says, give me that same time your superstars had to prepare. Wait a minute. That's AEW's job. It's AEW's job to train you and to make sure that you are good enough. They put you in the ring with Shaq already. Okay. You were in, you had a match with Shaq. They did all that stuff building up to this match with Shaq. And then they took you off TV because, you know, despite the fact that you got all the tools in your utility belt, your big bad utility belt, all of the tools, you got all the tools. You can't have a match. Look, it's nobody's fault that you were thrown out there and you're not very good. Admit that you're green. I get it. Um, which is fair. You know, people are going to take it easy on you because of that. But it's nobody's fault that AEW is doing a shit job of training people. And almost every week there's somebody getting hurt or somebody botching and almost killing themselves or almost killing somebody else. It's just your time this week. You know, it's usually Chris Statlander or Nyla Rose or somebody like that. It's this week is Jay Cargill. You know, this week is you. And we know you ain't been in the business a long time, which is why you probably should just say, look, eh, I'll do better next time. You know, I'll do better next time. This absolute meltdown that she had is ridiculous. She has such self-confidence, which I guess you need to have in order to get out there and get it. But it's been too many, too much of people just saying, look at her muscles, man. She looks like the perfect wrestler. She's girl Brian Cage now. You know, look, I get criticized somewhat for being, you know, into the muscles and wrestling and stuff like that. I'm a big fan of the Ultimate Warrior and Psycho Sid. Not exactly the mostly uh, ring veterans. You know, they were ring veterans, I should say, but not exactly the most uh, technically proficient pro wrestlers in the world. But for fuck's sake, fuck's sake, Sid was at least awesome. Sid might have botched and tried to break Brian Pillman's neck. Maybe. Maybe it happened that exact way. But Sid was fucking awesome. It looked cool. And if nothing else, Sid looked cool while he was fucking shit up. He didn't just... <laughs> just, <laughs> just and eventually, he caught up with him. You know? Uh, but Jay Cargill does not really look cool. She And she hasn't been doing anything. So all of this is just people blowing smoke up her ass. If she wanted the trainings to get better, I don't. She should tell them go to AEW, Tony Khan, and say, "Look, I need better trainings. I need. I'm embarrassing myself out there. I'm embarrassing the company. People are making fun of me. It's fucking with my mental health. You can't say these performers. Just talk about yourself. Speak for yourself." Speak for yourself because people have been telling other folks that they suck for a long, long time. And look, true indeed. I don't I have never wrestled a match. So do that does that mean somehow that I know when wrestling matches are good and bad? That's ridiculous. Of course I know whether the wrestling matches are good and bad or not. So, you know, I don't need to be able to cook a filet mignon to know that it probably doesn't look like anything I want to eat if it's burnt on both sides and it's burnt inside and it you cut into it and it's like eating a tire. Then guess what? It's probably not made right. You can't be like, well, you've never made one before. I know. It ain't supposed to look like that. I know what it's supposed to look like. <laughs> it ain't supposed to look like that. Now, uh, I feel bad for Jay because, again, this is all AEW's fault for pumping her head up and then throwing her out there. And everything is a photo shoot. She just looks really, really good. And um, it got her thinking that she's the shit when she is the shits. She's female Brian Cage. It's a shame. Let's move on. Just shut up. Let's move on to Bird Brain Maria Canellas because she, of course, can't stop talking. <sighs> Maria Canellis, WrestleMania 35, she was talking to Cage Side Seats. 
Here's what she had to say. It was the whole day. It used to be that when you got to the building at WrestleMania, you knew exactly where your family was going to go. You were able to show them why you've been away all year, why you haven't been coming home, why you've missed Christmas or Thanksgiving or birthdays or whatever. You were able to really give your family a VIP treatment, and they didn't have that. It was all about the sponsors. They had their area and then whatever else, but for the wrestlers themselves, there was no place for our families to go. I was like, I don't like this. I don't like this attitude towards my family. My daughter was actually stuck outside with my mother-in-law and my nanny for 45 minutes before I was able to get even get them into the building because it was so far away to get security down there. What ended up happening was is my the person doing my makeup had to go and get my family. It made me sad to think that wrestlers were no longer the ones that were special. It was the sponsors and the free giveaways to the VIPs. They all had rooms, but the talents family, the families that have sacrificed the most, had nowhere to go. And then, when they get in the building, they didn't have a backstage area. They had seats, like up in the stands, and they couldn't even really see that well. It was cold, and there was just nowhere for them to go. I want to give all the fans such a great experience throughout the entire year. But for my family, I want to give them that VIP treatment at WrestleMania. And I wasn't able to. What the fuck is she talking about? I mean, she just started talking about the weather and what the people could see and how long it took for them to get in the building and all this stuff. I'm like, what? Maria, what the fuck? You know, like... It be, it be, like I said, man, Maria is like the bitter ex-girlfriend. Her and her um, baby daddy, uh, sperm donor, um, Mike Canellis. You know, um, these these two people, man, they act like bitter ex-girlfriends. All of a sudden, everything you've ever done is wrong. They start talking about how, you know, they don't like the hair on the top of your lip. Your eyebrows are uneven. I don't like your hairline. You were always too fat for me anyway. I don't like your fingernails. It's like, God damn, okay. I mean, like, you had no problem when you were there. The problem showed up when you got fired. That's when all of a sudden, you know what? I don't like how they treated my family at WrestleMania. It's like, oh, what? What are you talking about, man? I'm like, oh, jeez, what the fuck are you talking about? It's, it's, it's so weird. There's more of it here, too. But it's stupid. I don't want to go into it. Maria, please stop talking about WWE. Please get a goddamn life. I mean, <laughs> she's just not. You got paid too much money to bitch so much. Now let's go to over to Bird Brain, Chelsea Green, which is absolutely hilarious. This is a funny story. This one isn't mean. It's just funny. Because this is a story of somebody who, you know, <laughs> just, just on the boat of can't get right. So... This was from the, uh, the Metro Sun or the Metro UK. Chelsea Green has revealed she had a secret boob job during her time with WWE. So she says on her Green with Envy podcast, I got a secret boob job. I never told WWE. I didn't really tell my coworkers. There are very few people that know that when I was healing from my wrist, I got a secret boob job. <sighs> She got a secret boob job. What the hell? So she said, I think I shocked them. I don't know what they knew how to answer that. I just had been called up to the main roster. It was kind of a big deal to be called up to the main roster. And then I asked for time off. I knew the trajectory for the next few months and I was not going to be on TV. Anyway, I got an email back and said, no, you're going to be used on TV. So she's trying to get a boob job. And at the moment she got called up to the main roster, she said to herself, you know what? Now is the perfect time to get my tits done. Now is the perfect time. Why is it WWE keep hiring? Like, this is the, like, we didn't have these problems. Well, yes, we did because The Rock had a boob job. So can't say, can't say we didn't have these problems until we started pushing women. But we did. We did. We had these problems with these cosmetic surgeries. But at the same time, man, of all the times... To, to bring up, uh, you know what? I want to get my tits done. I want to get bigger tits. 
right in the middle of a potential push. Right time to do it. What is up with these broads, man? What is up with this broad? So she continues. After she broke her arm, by the way, she broke her arm in the ring. And then, I, bullshit you not, this is what she said. One of the first thoughts I had while I'm in the emergency room, you know what? Fuck them. I'm getting boobs. So I have surgery on my broken arm that night. I get out of surgery and my first call was to the plastic surgeon. She breaks her arm at work and her first thought is not, damn, I broke my arm. I could lose my spot. Damn, I, you know, this was my big break. This was my big opportunity. You know, this sucks. This sucks for me. Her job is like, this is a perfect time for me to get my tits done. Because I'm hurt already anyway. Great time to get my tits done. How fucking selfish is this broad? What is wrong with this broad, man? Like, where does this come from? No wonder she got fired. It's like, they fire these folks, and then you see why they fired them. You know? Like, you see, like, over time, their, how, it, their idiocy seeps out in some way. Podcast, Twitter, you know, Bronson Reed is, you know, now proving why he got fired because he's a, you know, emotional dickhead and all that kind of stuff. You just start to see it. Like, yeah, I see why you were, they saw you were expendable and why they cut you. I see why they fired Maria. Look at how Maria acts. She's a fucking moron. And Chelsea Green's an even bigger moron. We could be here all day talking about the Iconics. I could have had another spot with them on it. Because they, there was another one that said something stupid. But I don't, it's, it's kind of old now. But this is, this is ridiculous. She, she was like, well, now I got a chance to get a boob job. <laughs> so, <laughs> so she continued, no regrets. I fucking love them. I went in and I was out in two hours and I had big old full D's. Bet they're the best thing I ever did. Well, honey, I'm so glad you, you are... <laughs> <laughs> so glad you've proud of yourself for getting a boob job. This is what Vince McMahon has to deal with. <laughs> he has to deal with people trying to take advantage of him all the time. You know, hey, we're paying this, we're paying this chick. She wants to take time off to get an elective boob job. That's that's insane. That's insane. Now, to be quite honest, there was a time. You know, and I think it might have been a little bit more recent than I want to say that if she'd have went to Vince and said, hey, Vince, I want to get some titties. He'd have been like, whoa, uh, go ahead. <laughs> you know, he probably would have been like, go for it. You know, uh, he probably would have helped her pick a size and everything. But in today's WWE, man, I don't know if you could tell the office you better get a boob job and they're going to be like, OK, that's cool. Because, like, you picked the stupidest time. Like, you were in NXT all that time. For starters, wasn't she hurt before she um, came to NXT or something like that? I think she got hurt while she was in NXT. She could have got the boob job done. Yeah, it was just ridiculous, man. This broad stupid. Chelsea Green's an idiot. Jade Cargill is sad. She's sad. And Maria's even more pathetic. It's like every week Maria does an interview where she has to complain about WWE in some way. We need to start creating a list, you know, Maria's big book of complaints about WWE. And uh, we'll see where, we, you know, I'm glad Mickey James hasn't said anything in a while. Jesus. It seemed like the, between the two of them, we could have did just videos on those two. <sighs> but let me know what you guys think of these ridiculous chicks in the comment section below. Like this video, share this video, subscribe to the channel, donate to the channel, and I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out. I